The opinions expressed in the following show represent those of Perry Logan some of the time. These are not necessarily the views of Perry Logan at other times. Dick Cheney, get the hell out of my dream! This is Dick Cheney. I'm a neocon. If you look up neocon in the encyclopedia, you'll find a picture of me. And by the way, I need another heart. Do any of you happen to have any living 15-year-olds in your houses? Neocons tend to need new hearts frequently. But more realistically, you're watching a neocon's dream. Well, that would be my dream. And I want you people to get the hell out, or I'll shoot you in the face. That's a neocon's way of dealing with problems. I'm Dick Cheney, who helped unleash the cancer of torture, the cancer of extreme rendition, the cancer of secrecy, the cancer of unconstitutional surveillance, all the things that have been carefully nurtured, watered, and cared for by the Democrats under Barack Obama. What are the elections so close? People think, do I want my neocon policies served up with or without the race card. Without the race card, please! Uh, me too. I'll have my neocon policies served up without the race card. Uh, thank you. Daddy? <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeannie. I was having the weirdest dream. Daddy, what's a neocon? Uh, why would you be wanting to know that? Let's just say I'm writing a report. A report. It's never what it seems with you, Jeannie. Just go with me, Daddy. What the hell's a neocon? I'm not sure that, that I should discuss the meaning of the word... Neocon! Jeannie, it's like this. The neocons are bad people. They are bad people because they want us to be killing lots of people elsewhere in the world. Got it, Daddy. The neocons want us to be killing people all over the world. And we do. We do at the behest of the neocons. Who? Boy, I don't know. I hope you're ready for this, Genie. The neocons are, uh, have very powerful wills. The neocons have very powerful wills? Look, you can make notes, but there is no need to repeat. No, this is like, you're getting, you know, you, you are getting a Perry Logan vision of the world, which is so much better than all the other visions of the world, right? Hey, Jim. Yeah, Tim. Looks like Perry got bowled over again. Well, you know, Perry is very light. He weighs almost nothing. <laughs> I didn't know that. Does he think people want us to see his feet dancing around like that? Well, what's all this talk about neocons, Tim? Neocons are people like Dick Cheney. People like Dick Cheney, there are others. The amazing thing is that we're living in a neocons world. We're living in Dick Cheney's dream, really. That's why he keeps chasing us out. This is Dick Cheney, get the hell out of my dream. And Perry Logan thought to himself, A neocon is kind of an empire guy. So a neocon's dream might be something like an endless militaristic highway to hell. That's right, I said an endless militaristic highway to hell. Here's probably represented by an exciting car chase. We're living in a world of drones. Barack Obama, whom I love, is totally pro-drone. He has massively multiplied drone attacks, created weird little science fiction honeycombs of drone activity, and compromised the karma of many troops, as well as the United States in general. Make no mistake about it, friends. 
Drone warfare is evil. Drone warfare is bad. Drone warfare is sure to create many more terrorists in the years to come. Thank you, Obama, for helping us to live this neocon's dream. feels after a good scream. Well, it makes me scream to look at just how terribly, frighteningly, really frighteningly neocon so many things are. Uh, foreign policy with, with drones, it's like extrajudicial assassinations, my friend, are a euphemism for plain murder. <laughs> It doesn't really matter if the Democrats are doing it, except that what I'm saying is that's more neocon stuff. Hey, wait a minute, Obama. Why all this neocon stuff? Well, Perry, I think you know the answer to that. Obama? Is that you? Yes, Perry. I've been turned by an evil spell into an empty chair. Welcome to the show, Obama. Sorry about that chair thing. It's my cross to bear. I see. <laughs> What did you mean when you said I would explain this whole neocon paradox? Yes, Perry. The neocon paradox is that we are living in a neocon stream under the alleged stewardship of the Democrats, despite all the multi-million dollar efforts made to depict America as facing a great choice. The truth is, Mitt, dog on the roof, Romney, and I agree on all the basic issues. Oh, that's not true, Obama. Hey, Mitt, how's that dog on the roof thing going for you? Don't give me that, Obama. You ate dog. I did not eat dog. Did so, did not, did so. <laughs> hey, you can verify this. Oh, well, I can't think that the people of the future, uh, after this election is over, are gonna wanna verify this, but, because I know this is a, like people of the future are watching this show. It's true. It's the people of the future I'm talking to, not you. Ah, 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 ah. 
So, to get a really good idea of how much alike our good friends uh, Obama and Mitt are, even though I know they're fighting, but they're fighting for power, okay? They're not fighting because they really disagree on most of the basics. This has been pointed out by um, many writers, some writers. For example, the Black Agenda Report. Let's hear it for the Black Agenda Report. Hey. If you think I'm mad at Obama, just go to the Black Agenda Report. <laughs> and they do have an article about all the points where uh, Mitt and, and Barack agree. And there are just so many basic points. This has also been pointed out by Glenn Greenwald, who is an excellent writer, uh, as alarmed as I am, and more informed than any of us, on the uh, destitute of human rights. Kids, can you say the destitution of human rights under the Democrats, the Obamacrats, people we love, but don't you see that there has been an absolute rampaging attack. I mean, I am not talking about a, uh, anything getting better. And, I, and I'm not even talking about things staying the same. I'm talking about things getting worse. I can't emphasize this too strongly. Do I have to kill you? Do I have to kill you? To get you to understand that the attack on human rights goes on a pace. Even as the corporate media and the candidates, the two big candidates there, are making a big deal about what a, a, a radical choice we've got. You will recognize this, people of my own time, will recognize this as very much the theme in the, in the media. You know, that which surrounds us is the corporate media, right? And I do think, it's certainly just my impression, that they are all about what a big choice it is. They say, they say it constantly. My good friends uh, uh, at MSNBC, who are like, you know, total Obama boosters for the most part, are, are, are sounding this note over and over again. What a big choice you have. But you see, this presupposes that Barack Obama is going to do any of the things he's talking about. <laughs> Where have you people been for the last four years? <laughs> Thanks, I needed that. Where have you been? I'm sorry about the teeth thing. I don't know, my teeth are just coming out when I talk about us. Where have you been? Don't you remember Obama like turning tail, <laughs> doing an about face on FISA even before he was elected? <laughs> and then assigning almost all neocons to his bloody cabinet? It was essentially all over then. Could I take a moment to say looking back, <laughs> with the benefit of hindsight, it was all over when Obama made those cabinet appointments, don't you think? Well, think about it, at least. <laughs> okay, all right, well, moving on. And, and there were just a whole series of broken promises. You don't believe me? Well, check it out. Oh, Jim, look at that. Will you stop waking me up, Tim? What now? Look at all these broken promises. These are big promises that Obama has broken. He just like broke them over his knee. It's no wonder everything has gone all neocon under what we thought was a democratic regime. What we thought was a democratic regime? Well, go back to sleep, Tim. There is kind of a light show thing going on here. I think it proves Perry Logan is a hippie. Not true, Tim. I know for a fact Perry Logan could not get into the hippies. Well, you're cleverer than I thought. You've made it all the way through the game to Perry Logan's basic point. We are living in a kind of a neocon fantasy uh, where, where things are done the neocon way, you understand? We are following neocon policies, neocons call the shots, neocons get all the breaks, neo, neocons get all the girls, which is kind of gross. Well, not all the girls, never mind. Neocons are really in a, in a position of, of also 
total impunity. How's that? How would you like some total uh, impunity? How would you like some total impunity? Yeah. Neocons have like infinite amounts of money. It's like, it goes on and on. I could, I could, it would be my contention, my friends, that if you look with clear eyes, this is my symbol for clear eyes. You'll see that most neocon things that we that scare us are in place. Neocons are people like Dick Cheney, and they think, I think they just pretty much figure we're supposed to be an empire. And they don't have much regard, and we love them, but they don't have no regard for human rights. But curiously, now you could talk this way under W. The punchline and the basic point that you've arrived at is that uh, uh, the Democrats are supposedly in charge. And the Democrats are currently, at, we are in the uh, hmm, final throes of uh, this election, this terrible election. Well, it's terrible because the guys agree on, on all the things that would really matter. <laughs> they're like this on foreign policy, okay? And that means they're neocons in this respect. I can't get anybody except you to listen to me on this. You are listening, aren't you? You haven't died, have you? Oh, no. Tell me, I haven't killed my audience again. Yeah. Yeah. The preceding was center. Perry has not killed his audience that many times. And Perry Logan thought to himself, a neocon's dream might be an open and endless sewer of human rights abuses. And the United States is currently very much an endless psychedelic sewer of human rights abuses. But wait, you say, this is under the Democrats. I thought the Democrats were more or less in charge. Why, yes, and that, my friends, brings us to the end of the sewer, thank goodness, and to one of Perry's basic points. Yay! Perry, what would you say of a presidential candidate who got 75% of his campaign monies from Wall Street? Sounds like a neocon to me. Well, that was Obama. What? Obama got 75% of his campaign monies from Wall Street. I get it. What would you say of a president who has not called for prosecution of the major criminal players on Wall Street? I'd call that man a rampaging neocon, sir! Well said, Perry. And once again, we're talking about our good friend Barack Obama. Yeah, we love Obama like a brother, but we hate his politics. And we hate his fans. Obamacrats, Obot, Oholes. You got to get out of the Democratic Party. If Obama loses the election, we can use the time to weed the Obamacrats and Obots and Obama people out of the Democratic Party as one might weed out a horrible, horrific, nauseating infestation of tapeworms! Gross ah! up, but we are so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But Perry's considered opinion is we need to rid the Democratic Party of its infestation of Obots! And now, Austin barely tolerated Perry Logan and the Neocon Stream Band play Infestation of Hobots! This is Dick Cherry, get the hell out of my dream! You're watching Austin's barely tolerated Perry Logan in a Neocon Stream. And that will be my dream, all right? Now get out of here, or I'll blow you all away! I hope you see Perry's point, that the neocon agenda is moving forward apace under the guidance of the two parties. It looks like the superior power of us neocons' personalities has got the political left and the Democrats dancing like little puppies. Ha ha ha!
<laughs> tis sweet, tis sweet. I, Dick Cheney, a war criminal, a man who should be in prison, am dancing about with utter impunity. Very much because of our captured puppet Barack Obama, puppet of the neocons. Puppet of the neocons? Obama, is that you? That's right, Dick. Say I'm not a puppet of the neocons just because there has been an almost seamless transition between you guys and me as regards human rights. You got that one right. The environment. Right on, Obama. And those killer drones. Obama, you're blowing my mind with all those drones. What are you, a neocon? Yes. In many ways, it's as Perry Logan says, I, Barack Obama, am best thought of as a neocon posing as a centrist Democrat. That's brilliant, Obama. That's absolutely brilliant. Yes, and only on the Perry Logan Show. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go sit down. Sit down, that's a good one, Obama. Sorry about that speech impediment. By the way, I need another heart. Does anyone out there have a living 15-year-old in their house? I can make it worth your while. I'm a neocon, you know. You're living in my dream. As the left dance around like puppets. You know, it's uh, in the midst of all this silliness is the remarkable thing, the remarkable phenomenon of seeing the left in America kind of co-opted by the right. Apparently due to the superior power of the neocon personality. Well, it is crude but effective. And I, I'm, you know, mark my words, if you travel around in so-called lefty circles in the U.S., you'll see, well, you know, first of all, they're not very lefty. They're very weak on things. They sound like neocons when they talk about capitalism half the time. All but a few lefties sound just like neocons. I think they've been co-opted. Yes, yes, like little puppets. I'm beginning to think the neocons must have superior, uh, some kind of power to get, you know, progressives will talk are complete wimps on gun control. Can I just take a moment to say all progressives but me are uh, wimps on gun control? Come on, man. Hardly a day goes by without some gun guy blowing away some of his fellow Americans and the gun guys always say the same thing and nothing gets done and you know that would be like the left dancing around like puppets or in this case perhaps just lying around like puppets <laughs> on, gun control. on foreign policy the folks on MSNBC are want to say that uh, Obama's foreign policy is terrific well, that's MSNBC. A good reason uh, not to watch MSNBC, though I love them. <laughs> but you see, Obama's foreign policy is totally and provably neocon. It has so many starkly, beyond neocon, it's not just neocon, this is what I'm saying. It's to a new level of neocon. Can you imagine that? A new level of neocon like this. <laughs> Dick Cheney, get the hell out of my dream! Hey baby. Have I said thank you for watching? Well, thank you. Hey. Let's go see the Purple Sphere. Ladies and gentlemen, you have successfully made it to another of Paris' main points. Ladies and gentlemen, the Purple Sphere. This is the Purple Sphere. This is the Purple Sphere. Oh! 
Hello, this is the Purple Sphere with an amazing insight for all of you. I hope you're taking notes, or better yet, making tattoos on intimate portions of your bodies. Yeah. Just a little sphere joke. According to Perry, neocons have very strong personalities. And if you look around, you'll notice that to a very large extent, the neocons have got the political left acting like neocons. I know. Perry wanted me to tell you because they knew you'd believe a purple sphere. And in the existence of purple spheres, all right? <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> Perry believes that the neocons really are uh, they are heavy, heavy hitters in the personality department and forcing their views on people. This is kind of what neocons do. I mean, I think they're jerks, uh, uh, but they have uh, relatively strong personalities. And I think in a very real sense, in an almost science fictional sense, the neocons have taken over the political left's minds. Much as an alien implant might take over your mind. Right, Logar? Damn straight, Purple Sphere. From my vantage point here on Logar, it's very clear that the political left in America have been kind of browbeaten by the neocons with their stronger personalities. I don't want you people of Earth to feel like a bunch of wimps, but I think many of your ideas have been taken over by neocons. They're under the control of the neocons just as surely as you might be under the control of alien implants. And I, Logar, hasten to say we do not do implants. Yeah.